Praise God. See, you don't know what praise is till you've been there and see where he brought you from. That'll put a praise in your mouth. It'll put a skip in your walk, a dance in your feet. It'll make your hands want to come together. Hallelujah. 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 Before I ask you a great question, I want to say thank you for your prayers, your cards, your emails, your chicken salad, <laughs> your chicken and dumplings, your cakes, your pies, everything. Thank you so much. It is not lightly regarded. It's deeply humbling and moving, and I thank you for it. You never know what you're going to face before next Sunday, see? Keep that in mind. But I do know this, I will never face anything alone. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, just go ahead and be seated and get you, get settled because I want, I want to ask you a question. Ready? Is anything too hard for God. Is anything too hard for God? Now that's what you call a rhetorical question because it has an obvious answer. And that answer is no. If something were too hard for God, there would be no God. But nothing is too hard for God. We believe that when we come to church and we get a little stoked. But once the sheep begin to scatter outwards after church on Sunday, sometimes we find ourselves in a place and there doesn't seem to be the spiritual uh, unction to respond no when the question is asked, is anything too hard for God? I, 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 maybe you'll agree with me. We are generally a pessimistic people. I mean, we usually look at what's not right and what didn't happen and what we used to have and where we used to be and how it used to feel we are generally a people looking over our shoulders rather than people regarding that as then, yesterday, gone. It was good for a while, but God loves us enough to take us from it and take it, uh, us from it. But we tend to be a little uneasy about the next step the next hour, the next day, the next year. We don't know what that is. We know what that was. And that was good for a little while. So we, we generally find ourselves, as we uh, listen to the news too much and what's happening way too much around the world, um, we... We wonder sometimes why this that, I, that we feel right now cannot last all week long. And the Bible teaches us that it should. So let me ask you, what have you been talking about? That will probably determine how forcefully you respond when I say, is anything too hard for God? What you've been talking about? Uh, if I dwell on... My needs, I feel needy. If I dwell on my blessings, I feel blessed. If I talk about what I don't have, I'll feel empty. 
If I talk about yesterday, I'll miss what's in front of me. But if I dwell on that which is, and that which is forever, if I think on the goodness of God, if, let me just tell you something. You can talk your way out of it. Now, brother, I want you to hear that because it happened to me this week. I talked my way out of it. I woke up in the worst depression. Oh, I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail. I just, it was bad. And I lay there and I thought, now, how long can I take this? This, this feeling is unbearable. How long can I take it? And so help me as I'm standing before you now, the Spirit of God said, you can talk your way out of this, you know. He didn't say you can pray your way out of it. He said you can talk your way out of this mess. You can talk your way up off of this bed. You can talk your way into a brighter today and an optimistic afternoon. And I, I asked the Lord, you know what, tell me. Because, you know, when, sometimes when you're incapacitated, you, you really don't know what to do in certain situations. And as I'm standing here before you, the Spirit of God brought a scripture to my mind. And I said, that's exactly what I'll do today. And that scripture was 1 Chronicles 16, beginning with verse 8. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. <laughs> Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. What's he saying? Tell somebody what God has done for you. It's not a secret. God didn't do it in a dark place just for you. He did it for you so you could tell somebody else what he can do for them. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him. Sing songs to him. Here we go again. Talk of all his wondrous works. What you been talking about this week? You still on that election business? You still worried about the European Union? Is, is all that stuff still on your mind? You still upset and agitated about social stuff and racial stuff and sexual stuff? Well, no wonder you feel pessimistic this morning because you were designed by the Creator as His child to talk about Him and His wondrous works and all the good things that God has done for you. You can't count them. If you started right now and you counted till you dropped dead, you couldn't count all the good things that God has done. Because you've got to talk about the things you've seen and heard, but you've also... Got to talk about things you haven't seen. Things God did you don't know about. The invisible things, behind, under the table kinds of things that God did. He didn't care if you knew it or not. He just loved you enough to take care of you. And this says if you want to bring yourself up and get out of it, you've got to talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who... Of those rejoice who seek. You know, here, I, I, God help me this morning. D do you know why while you're seeking the Lord, you ought to be rejoicing? When you don't know what to do yet and you're seeking. Well, you know why you ought to be rejoicing? Because you're going to find it. He said, if you seek, you will find. And although he seems to be <coughs> illusory at times and gone at times, he is not gone and he is not hiding let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Keep going. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek, seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Brothers and sisters, you've just read it. Make known his deeds among the people. Talk of all his wondrous works. Remember his marvelous works, which he has, what you've been talking about this week. Why are you cast down, oh my soul? Because I've not been talking about the things that are worth talking about. 
I've not been declaring his good. You know, I'm trying my best to take it easy. Wonder when the last time was we got together and instead of talking about stuff, somebody said, let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. It might even be your salvation story that people have heard 10,000 times. That does not matter. That's the greatest thing that's ever happened in your life. It's the mightiest thing that will ever happen in your life. And ever so often, instead of getting bored with it, you ought to stand up and say, let me tell you what the Lord did for me one more time. <clears throat> I was lost, he found me. I was dead, he raised me. I was sick, he healed me. I was confused, he straightened out my mind. I didn't know where to go, but he straightened out my steps. I thought I was in a bog, but the Lord set my feet on a solid rock and established my going. Let me talk of all his wondrous works. Let me make known the deeds of God among the people. You ought to say to somebody right now, God has been good to me. I don't care if you know him or not. You ought to say to somebody, God's been good to me. God has been good to me. He saved me. He helped me. I know he's been good to you. But let me tell you what he's done for me. God has been good to me. I got no complaints. Oh, I could find him if I go back and dig some stuff up. And I can mourn and moan and bemoan the fact that it was good then. What's going to happen now? I'm not what I used to be. Oh, no. You are better than you were. You've got more than you had. You're more blessed than you ever imagined. That was pitiful compared to what you... Mm. There was a man, some thought him mad. The more he cast away, the more he had. Isn't that beautiful? There was a man, some thought him mad. People think we're crazy when we laugh at what we lost. People think we've lost our minds in our society when we give and keep on giving. Because we've learned that you can't outgive God. The more you cast away, the more you have. Hallelujah to God. That's not the only scripture I came up with. Brother, I'm not supposed to preach long. And I've been up here about two minutes already. I'm going to Psalm 103, and I want to preach a little bit. I haven't been able to preach in a few days. I'm, I want to preach a little bit this morning. Psalm 103. Let, let me just say this. If you're sitting here today and you're thinking, I, you know, there's nothing really to be excited about in my life right now. My kids are crazy. That's how we feel sometimes. Isn't it? They're not just silly, they're, they're crazy. <laughs> my job is in jeopardy. My finances are in ruin. I'm hurting in my body. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I can't find a thing to praise him about. I found something for you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name and forget not all his benefits so we start with this one if you can't find anything else to thank God for this morning you can thank him for this who forgives all your iniquities <clears throat> not some of them not the worst ones or not the least ones not the ones you did 20 years ago and you're worried about the ones you're going to do tomorrow. Forget about it. He forgives all your iniquities. If you can't find anything else to praise him for this morning, think about this. You will never stand before God condemned. You will never have to endure the flames of eternal hell. You will never hear God say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. All you will ever hear and experience for eternity is, this is my child, washed 
cleansed, forgiven, sanctified, filled. You are mine and I am yours forever and ever. I'm telling you, if you can't find anything else today, you ought to thank him for the great salvation that raised you up and gave you life eternal and life abundant. If, is anybody in here saved? You ought to say, thank you, God, that you saved me from my sins. Who heals all your diseases. That's confusing to some people because it seems like the human body is riddled with disease. But if you study this, you'll find that disease doesn't only mean physical affliction. It, it's, it's equated with plague, you know. Plagues and disease seem to be similar terms signifying very similar things. But if you go back to the book of Exodus, you read about ten plagues. Frogs, lice, well, I could name them all, I just don't want to. I, in fact, I can't remember them. <laughs> but you ought to know what they are. So plagues, disease. He is saying, as long as you listen to me and remember who I am and don't forget what I did, no plague shall come nigh your dwelling. Frogs won't ever fill your house up. Flies won't ever fill your abode up. You won't suffer the things that the Egyptians suffered because I have brought you out so I can take you in. I have delivered you with a mighty hand and God can take care of any infirmity or any plague or anything else. In fact, he's already done it. You might be hurting right now, but you don't know what it could have been like if the Lord had not intervened. who redeems your life, God knows, from destruction. How many times did God save us from total destruction? How many times, even as believers right now, has God kept me from making a mess? Are you thinking about what I'm telling you now? In those low moments and carnal moments and prayerless moments, and careless days when you did not seek God and you went on your own way, do you know how many times you could have made the wrong decision or made the wrong turn or said the wrong word, but God kept you from destroying yourself. He delivered you from yourself and He crowns you in spite of it with loving kindness and tender mercy. This, I'm, folks, you're looking at a house full of kings and queens and prince and princesses upon whose head God takes the crown of loving kindness. You still see God is angry like he's a judge. Folks, he's already judged you. Do you hear me? You will never stand before the bema, you, uh, the, the, the white throne judgment you will never wonder if you're going to make it to heaven or not. Jesus already took your judgment. And now he places loving kindness and tender mercy crowns on your head and keeps you going every day. I'd like to shout about this one right here. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your new youth is renewed like the eagle. Hey, we shouldn't be here. Not one of us should be here today. We should have withered up a long time ago. But we're still going and we're still strong. Our youth is being renewed. The Bible says the outward man is dying, but the inward man is being renewed and refreshed day after day. I'm stronger today than I was yesterday. I'm fresher this morning than I was yesterday morning. I'm stronger in Christ. I'm deeper in the Word now than I was yesterday. It just gets better and better, and it grows and it multiplies. Hallelujah! So let me ask you again. Is anything too hard for the Lord? If you talk about your loss 
I repeat, you're going to feel like a loser. If you talk about how hard life is right now, self-pity is going to set in. And you don't want self-pity. You are reliving what you are recalling. I think I'll turn that just a hair. You are reliving what you are remembering. You are living like the one you're looking at. You are like what you are looking at. And that's why the Bible is our medicine. If we recall His goodness, we feel blessed. (laughs) If we remember His works, we feel honored. We feel full, complete. Does everybody hear what I just said? Well, sometimes it takes saying it three or four times. Whatever you're looking at right now is what you are becoming. Whatever you're staring at is the one you will mimic. Whatever you're looking at is the life you'll live. If you are constantly thinking about your losses, you will feel like a loser. But if this day you make the drastic decision to forget about the things which are behind, it's worthless, it's meaningless, it's yesterday, and God thought it was not worth your time, so he took it away. He let you live it. He let you learn it. He let you experience it. And he said, now move on. I got something great, God. I got something better for you. Stand up with me, please. Who needed this? Yesterday is not worth a conversation unless it's about the wondrous works of God. Do not waste God-given breath and energy recalling things that don't matter. Fill this altar up if you felt you needed this today. I want to pray with you. I want us to make a decision before we go out the doors about something today. Yeah, that's anybody wants to come down, you come down. What are you thinking about? I know with all my heart, I've been doing this long enough to know the voice of God. Some of you are having difficulty hearing what was said this morning because You are zoned out. You are headed somewhere. You're going to do something. There's a plan you've already made. There's some action you're already going to take about a matter. And it's wrong. It's the wrong action. It's the wrong plan. Do you hear me? You're going to miss it. Until you back up and take your hands off. And start talking about the goodness of the Lord how He has kept you and guided you all these years. And He's not going to fail you in this next deal. I'm going to say that again. It's burning me. Some of you are about to make the wrong decision because instead of stepping back and thinking on the wondrous works of God and making known His deeds and glorifying Him, you're decided you're going to take care of something and you're about to mess up. But God sent you here this morning. God sent you here because He loves you. And God says, I'll pry your fingers off this situation because I've got it taken care of. In the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Savior and Lord of glory, 
I pray this prayer right now. Oh God, for those who found themselves in the miry clay of despair and depression, for those who feel bound up and chained right now to a situation, for those who don't know what to do, I'm asking you, Almighty God, Holy Spirit, to set them free from this self-imposed obligation to fix it. You see, Lord, we get afraid that if we don't handle it, it'll get worse. What you're trying to do is tell us if we'll let you handle it, you will heal it. Hey, listen to me, church. You, had your, you have your eyes closed. Open them and look at me for a moment. God does not give advice. He gives commandments. God makes no suggestions. He gives solutions. God does not expect you to pray about it and then go ask 15 other people what they would do. Now, I feel pretty strong right now. This is going to hurt myself if I'm not careful. I want to say what I just said again. God does not give you advice. He gives you a commandment. Amen. He does not give you a suggestion. He's going to give you a solution. Amen. But you've got to put your eyes on Him and Amen. forget about what everybody else says. Amen. Either that word works or it doesn't. Either Amen. God can be a counselor Amen. or you better get one. Amen. Can I get an Amen. 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 So once again, in the name of Jesus, set your people free this morning. Set your people free. Let them come to that place of holy irresponsibility where they say, I give it to God. God, you can have it. I'm done with it. And then walk off and leave it rejoicing and remembering that he has never failed us yet. I'm about to lose it. I'm telling you, only... Only God knows how I'm having to hold myself back this morning. God is in this place. God is in this place. So I command you, and I can't do that. I, I tell you in the name of Jesus. Drop it. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Then drop it. Drop it. Leave it right here. Maintenance will vacuum it up in the morning. And you walk out of here instead of being heavy hearted with your shoulders stooped, worried about tomorrow. Why don't you walk out of here like you're headed to a party? Like you've been in a party. Why don't you walk out of here free? Take a deep breath. Enjoy the humidity. And say, nothing is too hard for God. God can take care of it. God's already made a promise. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Let's sing it, David. Oh, yes. You are
right, here's what we're going to do. When we dismiss you, you usually walk out and you say, how you doing? Good to see you today. How, how are things going? Don't do that. Everybody you pass, just do it for me. Just do it for me. Say, the Lord's been good to me. The Lord has been good to me. Can you do that? I mean, can you honestly do that? The Lord has been good to me. He saved me. He kept me, fed me, protected me. The Lord has been good to me. Get on out of here and tell somebody, the Lord has been good to me.